Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today I want to talk about something a little different. Yes, it's a NAS, but from a completely different direction. This is the CWWK, or Chang Wang, a name still I am not old enough to say without giggling, CWWK's X86 P5. This is... I'm not going to call this a mini NAS, I'm going to call this a micro NAS. For those of you that have been trying to build your perfect DIY router using PFSense or OpenWRT or whatever, chances are you've seen not dissimilar systems like this. But when you see it, it's normally in some bigger outer casing. And a lot of users who have liked what CWWK and Topton and the like have done with NAS motherboards, again, that Topton uh, is seller on board there, the N6005, etc., was really, really popular, want that same level of kind of open tinkering, but with these little micro boards here. And that's what this is. It's kind of, let's face it, an x86 alternative to a Raspberry Pi. But... NAS style. That is right. One, two, three, four M.2 NVMe slots there. One giant heatsink there at the top. And this system arrives with the Intel N100 CPU, a quad core four thread CPU with a six watt TDP reported behind it there. It's a eight to nine lane CPU. Again, a little bit of gray area there on that one. And this system, when you get it without any storage on board, without any memory inside, you can pick it up for about 150 quid. And 150 quid for a four bay M.2 NVMe SSD NAS is pretty darn good. So before we even get to what this system actually is, what it can and can't do, what exactly does 150 NICA actually get you? We've already established it includes none of the storage. It includes no memory inside. What are you getting? Well, that's the M100 model. If you scale up to the eight core i3 model, the N305, if you want that without any RAM, without any storage, that knocks around for about 227 to 250 NICA. So again, still not breaking the bank, but you do get your PSU. This is a 35 watt external PSU there using a standard plug there. No USB type C, which really bummed me out, but still nonetheless. You also get cooler kits. As so this system, which you've already worked out, is the super DIY end of this kind of device. So with this, not only have you got additional legs that can be used for mounting the device, these legs are also used for mounting the fans either side of this device. You've got different configurations of how you can set this up, more so when we actually talk about the inside. Uh, alongside that and those four M.2 NVMe slots there, the system also arrives with two of these. This is, and I'm gonna put that down there before I drop it again, this is a SATA power and data to 12 pin, I would call that a ZIF cable, but I know not everyone calls it that. This allows you to not only attach on there, have you got your four M.2 NVMEs at 2280 length, you can also add a couple of SATA drives there. Pretty darn impressive. So again, that's pretty much what you get. There's an instruction manual and details on the warranty, which are a number of you that are looking at products coming out of AliExpress and going, to what warranty? But Returning to this system architecture, that N100 CPU that we've seen on multiple other NAS devices uh, so far in the last year, year and a half, that 6 watt TDP, when we had the system fully populated with Kingston DC1000B um, uh, M2 NVMEs inside, during idle, um, it was exactly what you would expect, about 10 to 11 watts. But when we got it up to active use, we saw a variable rate there between 18 and 22 watts. Why variable? Well, because this system gets warm. There's no avoiding that this system, because it doesn't have, by default, any fans at all, it's silent, but it's heavily reliant on that base panel there to dissipate a lot of the heat. Moreover, as 4M.2 NVMEs there on the top, there's nothing really facilitating the airflow. Yes, you could put heat sinks on each of them that will draw the heat from the M2 NVMEs, but it doesn't dissipate them into the air as quick as attaching a fan would do. So attaching the fan to this system certainly ensures that the SSDs drop in temperature and overall the power consumption and the energy to be installed inside to facilitate it is therefore a little bit more variable depending on your setup there. Now the memory slot inside is a sodium uh, DDR4 
5 slot there and it supports up to 32 gig of 4800 megahertz memory. Non-ECC, that CPU there is not ECC supported, but frankly, for those of you that are going to talk about ECC in the comments, one, I see your point and I mostly agree with you, but also, this is 150 quid. What do you want? Jam on it? Um, now, moving forward from that, if we talk a little bit about the M2s there, uh, the BIOS, which, by the way, is unfettered in the extreme, all of it's there. This thing is customizable as F at the BIOS level. Uh, moving beyond that, once we got Unraid on this and dug down a little bit more into uh, the lanes and more like that, we found that each of those M2 NVMEs, although they are Gen 3 times 4 hardware architecture, they've all been unsurprisingly downgraded to 3 times 1 each. That means each one of those M2 NVMEs has got about a thousand megabytes per second to play with there. So each one of those um, we went through uh, on the terminal of Unraid, put some read and write tests on there. Uh, now, with the read performance, we got it around about 750 to 780 megabytes per second with one gig repeated sustained test files on each of them for read. Write, we saw enormous diminishing returns. We didn't know how much of that was to do with the temperature being raised on there. But in terms of write, we saw 590 dip down to 450, dip down to 350, dip down to about 200 to 250 megabytes per second i hate seagulls so in terms of performance on their read fine write this thing really struggled and talking of struggling when we tried to copy data between individual ssds we saw that performance number go even lower the performance we saw between transferring data in bay one and bay two went down to 100 to about 80 megabytes per second which for m2 nvmes is pretty darn poor but again how much of that was to do with oversaturation of the rather thick uh, thinly spread out PCIe lanes on this is hard to say but the other thing that's worth highlighting that may be the cause of it is you know how there's four M.2 NVMEs here at the top well this is actually a sister board here underneath here this board this PCB that mounts all four of these actually connects to its own individual gen 4 slot inside they're underneath those four bays at the top, there is an M2 NVMe Gen 3 times 4 not restricted slot there. All four of those are feeding into that single slot. And chances are that is a lot of back and forth to be handled by that process there for copying data back and forth uh, within those drives as we saw earlier on. It's a great uh, you know, flourish there in order to ensure that users can take advantage of more storage on a board that originally only had the single 1M2 slot on it, but nonetheless, that is one of the main defining reasons why the performance, particularly with write more than anything, but especially when writing between the discs, was so hampered. There's also uh, a little uh, Wi-Fi adapter M2 connector in there that you can stick in a Wi-Fi 6, a Wi-Fi 6, even a Wi-Fi 7 little M2 inside there, but of course, without the antennae, it's going to go nowhere. So you're going to have to factor in the antennae coming off there and where they're going to live around this if you're going to go down that router mode rather than going down the NAS mode. Again, with the NAS mode though, don't forget those two little hard drive things, uh, hard drive adapters with the 12-pin adapter. Nice, useful stuff. Now, in terms of ports and connections, we've got two USB 10 gig ports there. We've also got two HDMI 4K 60 frames per second ports there. And we've got ourselves two times 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports there. So a decent amount of, you know, ports and connections for 150 nicker. I'm not going to say they're breathtaking. Certainly not. I've complained about NASs with not dissimilar architecture to this. But when I have complained about those, it's because they've arrived at three, four, five, or even 600 pounds. For 150 nicker, it's incredibly difficult to complain about that. They even managed to squeeze in a physical power button there on the back for when connecting that external PSU, which damn, I wish was a USB Type-C, but you can't have everything. Ultimately, for 150 nicker, it is incredibly difficult to criticize this without adding the caveat, well, what do you expect for the money? Now, again, you can already kind of get this already in other forms. You can get this in much more pre-built forms. We've seen lots of mini PCs rock out the gate recently that have got a not dissimilar hardware architecture to this. But what this brings to the table is flexibility, customization. Those of you that want to build your own NAS from scratch the way you want it. And for that, I will give CWWK all the credit in the world. But 
This has been my review of the X86 P5. Want to see more on this? Want to see more tests? We got an article linked in the description. Hopefully, that should be live by now. We'll be going to a lot more detail about our tests that we performed and a lot more of the images about the inside and more on that. So check that out. We may do a follow-up video on this to something like Plex. We've already explored Plex on the N100 CPU many, many times before. So we might not do that with this. But if you've got a suggestion of what you want to see, do let me know. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. There's links in the description if you want to get one for yourself. And apart from that, I will see you next time.